Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Genetically Engineered Custom Cell Lines for Preclinical Research and Biomanufacturing. This webinar is part of the fifth annual Drug Discovery and Development Virtual Conference. And I'm Susie Valdez of LabRoots, and I will be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and sponsored by Millipore Sigma. For more information about our sponsor, please go to www.sigmaaldrich.com. Now let's get started. Before we begin, I want to remind you that this event is interactive, and we encourage you to first participate by communicating with other attendees using our new live chat feature during the presentation. You can find that live chat located at the right of your screen. You can also participate by submitting as many questions as you want during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. And if you have any trouble seeing or hearing this presentation, just click on the Help Desk button located at the bottom of the screen within the navigation bar or from the lobby. Finally, as a reminder, this presentation is educational and offers free continuing education credits. Click on the continuing education credits link located at the abstract window below the presentation window and follow the process to obtain those credits. I now present today's speaker, Dr. Stacy Ward, an R&D manager in advanced genetic and cell technologies at Millipore Sigma. For a complete biography of our speaker, please visit the biography tab at the left top of your screen. Dr. Ward, welcome. You may now begin your presentation. Thank you for the introduction. The life science business of Merck KGAA Darmstadt, Germany operates as Millipore Sigma in the US and Canada. In today's presentation, I will start with a discussion of Cell Design Studio, who we are and what we do. I will then talk about some gene editing technologies that we use in our workflows and some automation investments we have made to improve timelines. I will show some examples of project workflows and finish up with the advantages of working with us as your research partner. Cell Design Studio, or CDS, is based in St. Louis, Missouri in the United States. We are a group of scientists with over 13 years of established experience generating cell models. We are part of the Millipore Sigma Gen M, or Gene Editing and Novel Modalities franchise. And what do we do? We generate custom engineered cell lines for our customers. From initial project scoping to project updates and final summary, we communicate openly and regularly with you. Our workflows are flexible and customizable to what you need, and our customers always own the edited cells developed during the project. So what, what type of cell models can we make for you? Really anything that you could possibly imagine. So we often modify genes, things as small as single nucleotide polymorphisms with single base conversion, all the way to gene knockouts by introducing insertions and deletions, which result in premature stop codons, larger targeted integrations, and even building reporter cell lines. We can deliver you modified pools of cells, as well as single cell clones, as well as engineering um, most mammalian cell types, including primary cells and induced pluripotent stem cells. The applications of the cell lines that we engineer range from disease modeling to building cellular reporters, models for drug screens, target ID and validation, and even high content analysis. And as your research partner, we aim to solve the toughest problems in the industry by collaborating with the global scientific community. We really are your research partner, not a CRO. We have PhD scientists with over a decade of experience in engineering cells. And over the course of our group, we have engineered over 200 different genes and over 300 different cell lines. Everything from immortalized tumor cell lines to stem cells to primary immune cells. And we really do stand behind the statement that any modification, any target, any cell type, including the most challenging cell lines. We perform in an R&D-centric environment. 
so you will have direct communication with the scientists working on your project. We utilize state-of-the-art technology and methods for clonal selection and validation. And I will show you some recent investments in automation that have significantly shortened our project timelines. We have engineered dozens of IPS cell lines used for applications including lineage reporters for cell-based assays and SNP modifications for disease modeling. This is a slide showing the many tools that we use to engineer our cell lines. We primarily use CRISPR and zinc finger nucleases for all of our targeted uh, gene editing projects. We also use short hairpin RNAs specifically for those projects in which modification of um, that locus or that gene is predicted to be lethal or have a significant growth defect. For projects that do not require targeted methods, we often use lentivirus or simply plasmid delivery. And our research areas range from cell therapy and gene therapy to immuno-oncology and induced pluripotent stem cells. We perform in both the research and discovery space, as well as more downstream applications, including process development, analytical development, and manufacturing, which I'll talk about later in the talk. So this is a slide demonstrating some of the technology and automation investments that we've made over the past few years. By investing in these materials and machines, we have significantly shortened our project timelines as well as increased the success rate for our projects. I can start by talking about our DNA synthesizer, which we use to synthesize CRISPRs, ZFNs, and donors in-house. We also have multiple nucleofactor machines, which we use to deliver the materials to any multitude of different types of cells. Within our facility, we have multiple fax sorters and fax analyzers. Here's a picture of our fax aria that we use for both pool enrichment as well as single cell cloning. And for those cell lines that do not perform well in flow cytometry mediated cloning, we have also purchased an ALS cell selector, which is a fully robotic um, colony picker that allows us to image colonies, pick them, and then array them into a 96-well plate. When we perform single-cell cloning for our projects, it's very important that we are confident that colonies have actually um, been derived from one single cell that sat down. We do this by using our clone select imager for high throughput imaging, in which we can image multi-well plates rapidly and actually monitor cell growth with time. Um, and link all of the images together. When it comes to genotype confirmation for our projects, we utilize both digital droplet PCR as well as next generation sequencing methods, both of which we have within our group. And finally, when um, a project calls for protein phenotyping, we can use both our flow cytometry capabilities for antibody-mediated staining or fluorescent protein analysis, as well as um, things like our in-cell analyzer, which we can use um, as a microscopy-based method. All of our projects are divided into phases and are milestone-driven. This slide shows an example workflow for one of our CDS classic or research use only projects. By dividing our projects into phases, this reduces customer risk and allows for maximum project flexibility. The CDS team will work with you to reassess technical strategy based on project progress. So if the original workflow is not working for the cell line or the locus that we are editing, we can rapidly pivot and try additional strategies. In addition, all pricing is associated with each project phase. So you are billed only for the work that has been initiated by the CDS team. And this is another example in which this type of workflow enhances our position as your research partner. The phases begin with a technical evaluation of the project in which we will identify any potential pain points that we anticipate, um, as well as give you a projected timeline for how the project will progress. We then move into nuclease design and assembly of any reagents that we may need during the course of the project. We deliver these reagents to 
a pool of cells and always confirm activity within that heterogeneous pool before moving into single cell cloning. Once we have identified single cell clones, we will confirm genotypes and we always present all genotypes that we find within those clones to you and you as a customer can decide which clones you want us to expand and bank for delivery to you. Although we can edit any mammalian cell line that you send to us, we also have a, um, an agreement with ECAC, which allows us to use their cell lines. And here is a table that lists um, all of the cell lines that we consider our in-house cell lines. So these are cell lines that we have that we have um, thoroughly tested within our workflow. We know how they grow, we know how they perform, um, we know how to clone them, we know how to nucleoaffect them. So use of any of these cell lines significantly decreases project timeline since we don't need to do some of the upfront work for a cell line that we are taking in. If you are interested in using any of these cell lines, please reach out to us and we can discuss your next project. So what are some examples of these research use only projects that we've been talking about? They really range from things like building disease models as well as control cell lines to screening cell lines. On the top right of this slide shows an example of um, a potential SNP project. So this is a lipoprotein in which SNPs or single nucleotide base pair changes have been identified within the literature and clinical samples as being either disease associated or disease protective. So what we can do is take in your cell line, we can genotype the parental so we know what the genotype at each of these base pairs is that we're starting with. And we can propose a project in which we can convert any of those SNPs to either a disease-associated or disease-protective SNP. And in that way, the cell line remains the same, so you can culture them with the same media, the same plastics, roughly the same kinetics, as long as there's no um, growth phenotype after editing. And it really does make for a better, better model for your downstream testing. On the bottom right of the slide is an example of what you can do with a gene knockout model. So if um, you're interested in studying the potential function of a gene, we can use targeted nucleases to introduce out-of-frame mutations that result in premature stop codons. We can also do some phenotyping of the cells to demonstrate that there is no RNA or protein then being produced. And you can then use these cell lines as well as either per the parental cell or a mock cell that went through the entire editing process but does not have uh, the same gene knockout. And again, in this way, you can use matched sets of cells for your studies, which increase reproducibility for your experiments. So here are some um, examples of the data that may be presented to you during the course of one of these projects. In this example, we were generating a gene knockout. We first designed the targeted nucleases, in this example, CRISPR guides, that will target an appropriate region of one of the coding exons. We do this bioinformatically, as well as with an eye on any potential off targets. We deliver these RNPs to the parental cell line, thus generating a uh, nucleic-affected pool. We will genotype this pool using next generation sequencing methods as shown in the top middle, in which you can see the insertions and deletions that the cell introduced to this locus. And this way we can get a numerical readout of what the efficiency of these guides were within the cell. And we know approximately how many cells are potentially knocked out. Once we move on to single cell cloning on the bottom of the slide, this is an image from our clone select imager in which we're imaging a 96 well plate of single cell sorted clones. You can see that there are wells that contain um, cells that were derived from one single cell that laid down and formed a colony. We can also quickly see that there are wells that contain two such colonies, which indicated that two cells sat down and thus this sample is not clonal. On the upper right, 
we will always confirm clonal genotypes using typically PCR-based methods. We will run them in agarose gels, as well as doing digital droplet PCR or next-generation sequencing. And depending on the project, we can also do some phenotyping assays for you. We can do things like ELISA-based methods, as well as using our flow cytometer analyzers to do antibody staining to determine whether there is protein being produced. In addition, all of this data will be presented to you as our customer during regularly scheduled update meetings, and you will have access to all of this data. Our services are customized for either research or commercial use. So our research field of use still contains the same products and services that are high quality, flexible R&D partnerships. And these are research use license deliverable cell lines that were engineered with CRISPR-Cas9, ZFN, or Lent virus. Research use only typical, typically falls within the early discovery field of use and lead optimization. If your project is moving more into preclinical and clinical development, manufacturing, or quality control, then this type of project would fall under our commercial field of use. This is cell line development with enhanced documentation requirements. You as the client will approve all of our raw materials and batch record documents, and we will work with you with regulatory expertise to drive success of your program. Both types of these projects are industry leading service for all applications. We always use the same state of the art technology and methods, the same type of direct communication and a dedicated project management team. If we compare our two offerings of our research use only or CDS classic and our commercial field of use or CDS ultra, both types of projects contain detailed scoping consultation, regular update meetings, and the flexibility to pivot project scope as needed. They also both contain customizable deliverables to what you need at the end of the project, milestone based pricing, and always client ownership of the engineered cell line. Our CDS Ultra projects also include dedicated lab space for the project, client documentation approval, full traceability and approval of raw materials, regulatory expertise for biomanufacturing, and an option for CGMP cell banking via our BioReliance service. The project workflow of CDS Ultra projects appears very similar to that of our research use only. Some important differences to point out are that they always begin with a document approval and material procurement phase. In this way, we can get all of the materials that we need for your project and um, keep track of things like lot numbers and expiration dates. And you as the customer will proactively approve all of our documents before we start. The actual engineering of the cells and the technologies we use are similar, if not identical, to that of our research use only projects. But you'll notice in blue that every phase has an additional documentation phase built in. And this is for the enhanced documentation that is required for future regulatory body filings. The type of customer that would need one of these CDS Ultra projects are ones who need engineered cells for more downstream applications like cell therapies, potency assays, quality control or quality assurance, or batch release for some examples. And it's important to note that this enhanced documentation cannot be retroactively added on to any project. So if you start a research use only project with us and we do not discuss this enhanced documentation, we can't engineer your cells and then at the end of the project kind of retroactively go back and formulate these documents. It's something that must be agreed upon before the project begins. Here are some examples of CDS Ultra projects that we have performed. In the first example, our customer was in the cell therapy space. They already had an established engineering platform utilizing plasmid transfection. They had a cell type they wanted to use, as well as a phenotyping assay for the generation of a protein producing cell line. Our initial scoping resulted in customization of the number of clones. We used customer-specific records and reports based on enhanced documentation throughout the project. And the project evolved during the course of engineering, which resulted in further genotyping of the cells, including some whole genome sequencing that we performed for them. 
And one of these projects thus far has resulted in the FDA granting an orphan drug designation for the cell line. A second example of a project is a customer in the gene therapy space. This customer needed three knockout cell lines for a potency release assay. Extensive initial scoping resulted in the use of zinc finger nuclease technology, as well as the customization of the number of clones. In addition, we arranged for shipment of the engineered cells to a third party for phenotypic testing before the customer decided which clones they wanted expanded and banked. And also, the customer had specific records and reports that were based on enhanced documentation used throughout the project. So some potential um, projects in the future that um, might be utilized under the CDS Ultra workflow. When we think about the immuno-oncology space, quite often a lot of the early discovery is done using patient samples and clinical samples. So in this example on the right, a heterogeneous tumor sample from a patient is used and can be separated into different cell types like the tumor cells, the stromal cells, and the immune cells. An early discovery can be performed using single cell analysis or genotyping and phenotyping on each of these different cell groups. And this is wonderful for finding initial hits and trying to determine different pathways that might be druggable or important for your process. But when we think about moving into the preclinical and clinical therapeutic space, these cell types are not amenable to the workflows that you need. For instance, human primary samples are notoriously difficult to grow in culture. There is high variability between different patient samples. They require specialized media for growth. They are quite often passage limited. So if you're thinking about building an assay for something like a potency release um, based on some of these potential drug targets, you wouldn't really want to use cells that were derived from patients. And that's where we can help as your research partner. We can engineer in whatever modifications of the genome you need to either build a tumor cell model or even editing immune cells that you can use in vitro to test your potential therapeutic and move it on into more downstream applications. So some of the advantages of our enhanced documentation, if we think about the entire upstream and downstream ecosystem and workflow, starting with cell line development in the upper left-hand side of the screen, all the way down into GMP manufacturing of either your therapeutic or your um, cell line to be used for a release assay. We perform in the upstream space. So upstream cell line development lies outside of any CGMP requirements. However, all of the downstream manufacturing of these materials requires the use of GMP. And it's important to remember that with the changing regulatory landscape, we need to consider any future requirements for filings. So if you are in this space and interested in pursuing an engineering project with us that could move into downstream applications, I would encourage you to think about our CDS Ultra offering. In addition to our custom cell lines that we engineer for our customers, we also have a number of specialized cell lines that are available for immediate purchase off of our website. These include our monoallelic HLA lines in which we have knocked out expression of all class one MHCs and then individually reintroduced one class one HLA at a time. In addition, we have our tumor associated antigen expressing cell lines. These are cell lines that were knocked out for expression of potential tumor associated antigen and we phenotypically confirmed that they are knocked out for expression of the protein. And we were then able to introduce either low expression levels or high expression levels of the tumor associated antigen, thus building a panel that you can use to test your therapeutics. If you are interested in doing some engineering of cell lines on your own, but don't want to use CRISPRs or ZFNs, we offer our Floxed landing pad cell lines. A schematic of this is shown on the bottom of the slide. We have knocked in an EF1 alpha promoter driving expression of a red fluorescent protein into a safe harbor locus of a number of different human cell lines. 
Both the promoter and the RFP are um, flanked by unique lock sites. And in this way, you can purchase these cell lines and use Cree recombinase technology to then exchange either the promoter or the red fluorescent protein or the entire cassette with whatever sort of donor molecule you need for your purposes. And if you are interested in more microscopy-based assays, we offer a number of different triple tagged cell lines. In the example on this slide, we have tagged tubulin, beta actin, and laminin with different fluorescent proteins. And in this way, you can use high content microscopy to monitor any morphological changes within these cells. So to finish up, Cell Design Studio is part of the process that allows us as a company to offer you end-to-end -end cell therapy um, workflows from research to manufacturing. So we perform in the cell engineering and cell characterization parts of the workflow, but our company also offers a number of different production tools and raw materials that meet GMP standards, as well as offering process development assistance. And this allows us to offer you seamless integration of services, including custom cell models, assays, viral vector CGMP production, cell and virus banking, as well as biosafety testing. Thank you so much for your attention. Dr. Ward, I want to thank you again for your time today and for your important research. And before we go, I want to thank our audience for joining us today. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Kyogen, for sponsoring today's webinar. Questions submitted today and during our on-demand period will be addressed by our speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. And this webcast can be viewed on demand for two years until February 2024. Labrids will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.